Hi, my village. Let's see. Say hi. Boom. I'm gonna tag a few people. Say hi, wave, um, send an emoji, something to let me know that you're um, you're here, so that I can see if my comments are working. You know how Facebook Facebook be doing me. I'm just inviting a few people. We're gonna have a real conversation today. And share the video. Um, and I thank everybody that's been sharing my videos lately. I appreciate the support. Um, today's topic is why now? It's kind of in relations to um, the last video I did with my review on the uh, R. Kelly situation. Hey Tish, hey everybody. Um, because a lot of people are always questioning like, why now? Why all these allegations right now? So I'm gonna talk about why now? <laughs> um, pretty much when you think about people coming out with this documentary and it's been so many years and they've been uh, saying stuff about him for all these years. Um, why now is because nothing is being done. We're not going to keep bringing up something and just give hi. up on it. My son wants to say hi. <laughs> My little brat. Uh, we're not going to just give up and we're going to keep pushing until something is being done that's why now and why now is because some idiots are still downloading and post purchasing playing his music i don't understand how ever since the documentary came out his sales went up 17 percent. that's sick that's sickening like i just really don't understand it um even if the allegations are fake you still know he he married Aaliyah at the age of 15 you still know he did a sex tape with a 14 year old period you still know it happened it don't matter all the people coming out we already have proof of the situation of the stuff that he's doing even though now it's worse with this whole cult thing but even before that we already knew he was sick but people don't want to believe it everybody wanted to do this justification and all this stuff um plus right now like me i'm 32 i'm an 80s baby Growing up, I was in elementary when all this stuff was going on. I didn't know about it. So this is new to me. And people keep saying like, oh, y'all like y'all shocked and all this stuff. I wasn't exposed to that. Like, I, we weren't the TV generation. We didn't sit out in the house watching TV. We played outside. So when the case and everything was going on, we wasn't paying attention to that. We were Most of us were too young to understand what was going on in the first place. Just like the girls he was dealing with. They were too young to be able to decipher like if it's wrong or right that the stuff he was doing we weren't gonna watch no sex tape and no dang <laughs> uh in elementary uh 10 11 years old that's when this stuff came out and um so why now is because they want to make everybody aware hey coaches they want to make everybody aware of what's been going on remind you that there's still going on nothing's still being done about it plus right now it's really opening up the conversation for people to have with their kids um basically like we really need to educate ourselves and we need to educate our kids this is the time to take things like this serious twin really <laughs> they knew what they were doing when they were being they were naive they didn't know better they didn't know better and it don't matter about them having sex it's just not that's not the point the point is, he know he's the adult. He should be the one not even pursuing these girls. That's where the problem is. Because these men with their sick mind going after these young girls, it don't matter if the girls had sex with them, whatever they did. They did what they did. Yes, we know that. That's obvious. The point is, it's not right. <laughs> it's statutory rape. They were underage. And we're the parents. I, I don't even want to see the tape, coach. <laughs> like, I literally don't even want to see the coach. Hey, Nacho, um, the tape. Um, but we know it wasn't right. And we see, like, I just had an older man in my inbox now. I'm 32, and he's way older. You're my father age. Why are you trying to talk to me and flirting with me? 
like that makes me cringe like uh and i'm i'm of age <laughs> and i still don't like it like i've never like when i was 18 i did date a guy that was 28 but i was adult i was living on my own i was off in college i was working everything i was taking care of myself but i am a mature person this been going on for generations it have it have it definitely have you have these older men um yeah the parents i blame the parents because y'all know i'm a parent coach oh yeah i forgot to introduce myself for those who are new to my page they stop stop those who are new to my page i am monique i'm a parenting coach i help parents co-parent with success to be able to coexist in their child's life so I am an advocate to save these kids from the parents because half of the time I always tell people when I coach kids, it's not their fault. It's their parents' fault because their parents are not doing, they weren't educated. They don't know right from wrong. They're influenced by money. They're influenced by fame because they have that poverty mindset. That's what I call it. A poverty mindset. Do anything to get rich quick. Do anything for money, even if you're selling off your kids. And it's a shame. Because growing up in the hood, I see it happening all the time. People on Section 8, government assistant, lazy, won't get off their butt to go work for something. Put your kid in a performing arts school. Encourage them to make a career out of it, but do it the right way. Go to performing arts. Put them in private school. Put them in an environment that will give them access to be able to follow their dreams and stuff. Motivate them. Encourage them. Put them in some talent shows. Put them in a boys and girls club. Like Create some stuff in an environment for them to be able to do that. They don't have to be prostituted off to get an album and they still don't have one people have been with him 15 years they're still not famous we don't even know who the hell they are without the documentary you saw it years ago yeah it's it's crazy but that's what that's how we have sugar daddies so my you are you twin you are right <laughs> um but these sick men it really disappoint me because they feel like it's okay because if the girl is willing to do it it's okay no, you are the one that's supposed to shut it down. You shouldn't even pursue it in the first place. And it's very inappropriate. And I, it irks my nerves and low-key pissed me off when people make excuses for it. Because there's no excuse whatsoever. And that's where we go back to the generational curse. Some of us need to break the mental mindset in our family. Hey... Um, some of us need to get help because it's a generational curse. You got these, um, young parents having babies at a young age, but then their mom did it, their grandmother did it. And then they don't know, nobody's telling them like, oh, this is wrong. Just protect yourself. Um, they're not telling their kids they're beautiful. Um, they're not telling their kids like they love them, stuff like that. Because most girls that stray off like that, insecure, they're weak minded. They don't hear or get that love at home. So they go seeking it from someone else. So it's easy to um, manipulate them. And the other biggest part is, which what I help with co-parenting, both parents need to be in their life. Because I don't know not one real man, father that would not be in jail to this day going to get their kid if it was my dad he would have all the compton watts in la and chicago going to get me period no questions asked he will be in jail i would not be at that house 15 years you would not be keeping me out locking me out that door would have been broken down simple as that but that's just the kind of dad i have because he cared about me he loved me and he would go Full of, he would go crazy for me and my sister. We're the oldest, we're twins, and we're the only girls out of six his kids. There's no questions asked that he would not be out there getting me. I wouldn't be waiting years for my parents to come rescue me if I'm in a situation. No. My mom would have did it too. My whole family would have been in jail. Because <laughs> uh, one way or another, I'm going to get home. They're going to have access to me. Uh, willingly or uh, <laughs> involuntarily or voluntarily like Medea say <laughs> let me see what you said uh, he don't even know who they are he don't but then he's have mental issues so he's going to say whatever he wants just like he's trying to throw everybody else under the bus because the radar is on him he's going to say whatever he wants just so that uh, he can look better in the light of all this stuff coming out there was a time when it was legal to marry a 15 year old. 
it was and even back in the day people used to do arranged marriages with underage some cultures it's okay but i know in the black community and these are all these black girls um it's not okay find what funny twin but yeah they as parents we need to teach our kids morals values show them love at home tell them how beautiful they are if they don't like the way they look, help them improve. If they're overweight and they're getting bullied and teased, go work out with them. Take them for a walk. Commit to helping them change and get better. That's what you should do as a parent. You're responsible for them. So when something go wrong, of course they're going to blame you because you're responsible. Ain't no parents going to leave, oh, without getting the police involved. But then it was out of the police control because if they don't have a um, proof that the kid is at harm, they can only do like they were doing the wellness checks. I know about that because I dealt in the, the um, psychology field and medical field. They only can request a, med, um, a wellness check. And if something's wrong, they can either um, admit them to a 72 hour hold in a mental institution. If they would have said their kids said they're gonna kill themselves, they probably would have got in. Because in, the, um, in that industry, if you say or call and say your kid said she wanted to kill herself or he wanted to kill herself or attempt it, they will put them in a 72 hold because they'll feel like the person is in danger. And um, if something's going on at home or your child has been molested or experienced that type of thing, get them help. Don't let them go through life struggling, trying to figure it out. If you can't help them, get them help. If your child, if your kid's saying they're being held. The police um, can get a warrant, but the kids didn't have communication with their parents. That was the problem. He took away his cell phones. Um, they pretty much had to give him permission to talk to their parents. So that's pretty much what the problem was, the lack of communication. Some of them haven't talked to their kids or seen them in a while. But, um, and even as a kid, if they believe that nobody's looking for them because they can't watch TV and stuff like that, they never know. It's easy to manipulate them in that situation because they don't know that their family is actually looking for them. Otherwise, they will try to get out. They will do whatever they want. Even if it's going to cost them their life, they'll try to get away. But he train their mind to think that nobody wants you and that's why they stay because they feel like I'm he's my everything and that's just uh, that people do that in relationships they manipulate these girls they wind up leaving the relationship it take them a long time to leave because they feel like nobody want me I don't want to be alone um, some of them this is the first time somebody even gave them attention act like they care about them it, it, it happens He's not in jail because his victims really, um, when it was time when he did have charges against them, they wouldn't come forward. You cannot prosecute someone without a victim. He paid them off. Her dad still was his guitar player um, for the girl that was in the sex video. He had uh, signed a contract. Basically, he pretty much got paid in uh, a record deal or a contract to play in his band as a guitarist. So he sold his daughter off pretty much. So they couldn't prosecute him because the girl said it wasn't her in the video, even though they could obviously see it was her, but you got to go by their word. Even if they're lying under oath, they can be having charges against them for lying under oath. But the girl was a minor. So if her parents say it wasn't her and she, there's no victim. You can't prosecute without a victim, even if you have all the evidence in the world. That's just the way our judicial system works. That's why we need to um, have that conversation because something needs to change. The way the um, judicial system is and the laws need to change. Ain't no limits on uh, kidnap charges. Yeah, but if they're saying they're not kidnapped because he's making them record videos, like they were saying, he make them write letters saying that he stole from them or their parents stole from them. You have to look at the details. Um, he have record them saying that they're there on purpose and stuff like that because he's basically manipulating them to do this so that he can have proof to save himself from going to jail even though the stuff might be a lie he's making them say it and he's recording it and making them sign uh paperwork saying that they're there willingly and the parents uh released guardianship so some of the parents were stupid enough to release their guardianship to someone that's supposed to uh, take them to school 
and all that stuff. So he was getting the girls to school. Some of them graduated school and stuff like that. He did let them go to school and stuff. But um, some of their friends reached out to the parents. So you got to look at the details. And we have to change our mindset. That's that hood mentality. People are not open-minded and looking at the details. All that other petty, stupid shit, is, it don't matter. Because that's just trying to justify what the hell is going on. It's not really... It's trying to solve the blame, not the problem. And I keep telling people, stop trying to solve the blame and solve the problem. You can't blame these girls for being in that situation. The situation happened. We know that. What are we going to do to change it is the problem that we're trying to resolve. That's why this stuff is coming out. Because we're trying to solve the problem, not the blame. Problem is, this is happening too many times and something needs to be done about it. People need to educate their kids, their self, stop being weak-minded and having that crazy mentality. Because you know if it was your child, it would be a whole different situation. And it just um, it boggles my mind the response people have to it. And I just be like, I can't believe <laughs> that's just the mindset that some people have. And it's crazy. The focus is not on who's wrong and who's right. Like I said, we're not trying to solve the blame. And some of them might be doing it for the money, but we already know there's some truth to the situation because they had evidence. <laughs> That's why he had 20-something charges held against him, even though he didn't go to jail for it because there was no victim to be able to prosecute him. It still happened. So that's where people lose sight of. The fact of the matter is it happened. It's wrong. We need to have a change. Yeah, we know he messed with Aaliyah. He was wrong for messing with her. But that's besides the whole point. That's where everybody's missing the whole point. You're still talking about the blame. Stop that. I just wanted to win. <laughs> so people are mad annoying. Um, it is our culture, and it's the mentality, too. And people make it seem like it's okay, because you see these celebrities, these... Instagram models and these celebrities and people that sleeping their way up um, to the top people make it seem like it's the norm it's okay that's what you need to do to survive that's what needs to be broken that cycle they see I'm doing that that generational cycle needs to be broken a lot of girls was getting picked up by older guys but those guys are sick. <laughs> It's like, why would you want a girl in high school? What could she do for you besides be a sex object and make you feel young again? She can't do nothing. She probably can't cook, do nothing. So it's like, why would you want... Like, we have to stay woke. <laughs> as simple as that. We have to stay woke. Keep our eyes closed on your kids. <laughs> make sure you know where your kids are at at all times. Make sure you... um asking questions i don't care if you being a protective parent i really me and my sister really thanked my mom the other day for being a strict parent we were like mom we used to think she was a strict we couldn't go nowhere we wasn't able to go to parties and stuff like that um with our friends because she's like how people say all oh, these girls are fast and stuff like when you got a lot of your friends teen par um, parents and pregnant and stuff like that my mom seen that even though we weren't like that because she raised us right and that we would have uh we wouldn't be here <laughs> if we came home with a baby because her rule was if you have a sex you better have a job in your own place and you better not be in my house that was her we had real conversations just like i have with my son i'm very open and honest with him and up front that's how my mom was there's no excuse for him yes yes reese <laughs> but yeah um But the thing, my, what you're missing is, um, it's not about the blame. We point out, because we already know what happened with R. Kelly. We already know what he did. We already know he has mental issues. He's sick. He's narcissistic. He need help. We know that. But what are we going to do about it is what we're trying to put the word out for. We're trying to get people to understand this is what's going on. Y'all need to watch your kids. Um... So that's pretty much what everybody's mad about is that nothing's being done. 
um, people are still ignorant enough to keep downloading his music, paying for stuff. And, um, no, because they do talk about other uh, pedophiles. They talked about Michael Jackson, I don't know, for how many years. Like, <laughs> messing with little boys. And uh, they talk about Hugh Hefner. Like, they talk about it, but nothing's being done. So that's why it keep coming up. That's why it keep coming up. We got to do better. We got to do better. We got to quit making excuses. We got to quit ignoring stuff like we don't see it going on. They say, I'm doing a live. Don't do that. So um, we just have to make sure that we're being conscious. Like, don't just ignore stuff going on. If you see something that looks sketchy, you better question it. If you see little girls uncomfortable around certain family members, you better ask some questions. Me, I would put you on blast. Simple as that. It's not about everybody else. It's about him and his sick. Yeah, it definitely. Nobody cares until it's their child. That's why we have to change that mentality. All of them should be under the jail. That's the same thing I said, Reese. <laughs> him, his crew, and everybody else, he protect himself because he's not the one doing it. Everybody else is doing it for him. And he's doing a non-disclosure agreements with these girls. He's protecting himself um, because he don't have his hands on anything. The crew do. Let this be an understanding. <laughs> okay, sis, let me see what you said. Let this be an understanding to those who are saying girls were getting picked up by older dudes. I was 17 and dated a 19-year-old. No boys were on that level at the time. A lot of women do date up because the maturity level of people in our same age group is usually not there, especially at a younger age. Um, women are always a little more mature than men. Um, I grew up with the guys uh, since I was 15, and my mom knew him. Yeah, and usually it was family, friends. All situations of getting picked up by older guys doesn't mean it was a problem. Um, most boys and men in our generation are not mature. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. That's why at 18, I dated a 28-year-old. I always dated guys way older than me, um, five to 10 years older, because then they can relate to my mindset. <laughs> They were on the same page. They weren't worrying about Jordans and video games and stuff. Um, and hanging out, being with car clubs and stuff. They were on some real goals and had a vision. I'm an asset woman. I need somebody I can amplify. How many men date older women? Because <laughs> women ain't looking for no younger man. Unless they're a sugar mom and they're desperate and thirsty. And they just want somebody to have sex with and not be in a serious relationship. And it is the parents. Exactly. Let me see. It's the sorry, no good women <laughs> raising kids. It is. And a lot of times these kids usually have younger moms. They're born into dysfunction. They're born into a generational curse and nobody is trying to break the cycle. Now, Kells was a different situation. He purposely sought out. Yeah, he was at, hanging out at high school with grown men. First off, if I was a parent at the high school and I see him hanging out there, I'm going to be suspicious. I'm going to question it. The staff didn't really say anything. And I would have questioned everything. They should be locked up for like, yeah, without parole and throw away the key. Let the man in jail rape him. <laughs> <laughs> let them let them handle them because I'm pretty sure if they was to put him in jail he would have to be 24-7 uh, security protection because they would destroy him yeah kids with kids <laughs> but yeah it's like a lot of people lose sight of what the actual message and what they're trying to actually accomplish they're trying to shut mute him if you look at that they're saying mute Kelly um, movement and also the movement to make people aware of what's going on, aware of like check on your kids, um, see what they're going on, what they're going through. Like one of the girls she mentioned, my mom didn't know what I was doing because she was a single mom. That's why it's important. This is why I do what I do. Both parents need to be involved because if one parent is working a lot and they're a single mom, of course they can't have eyes on their kids all the time. 
And that's what one of the girls, she was like, I was going to the court every day. I was ditching school. My mom was a single mom. I'll be back home by the time I need to be back home. She had a whole system because her mom was a single mom. And that's another problem. Most of these women were by themselves trying to go get their kid. Where's the daddy? Um, your dads, the dads need to really be involved. And that's why I'm the way I am. When a guy tell me he love me, it don't matter. Because my dad told me that every day in my life. My dad always <laughs> told me I love you. Like some people fall for that because they never hear it. They don't hear it at home. What they don't hear at home, they go seek for in everybody else. And they look at him like their dad. That's probably what it is. Like, oh, I didn't have a father figure. And this older man is giving me attention. Something my dad never did. It's easy to get them real a man like that. Well, it's different. It's not just you dealing with an older guy. Like me, the older guy I was dealing with when I was 18, I was still a virgin. We didn't have sex. We were just dating and friends. It was different. So it, it's like when people, like my, what you're focused on is the blame. <laughs> so like I'm over that part. You're focusing on the blame. You're trying to justify what's been going on. And that's what's wrong with our society. Too many people focusing on the blame and not focusing on the problem. And that's what's wrong with us. Even being a single mom, you got to teach your kid. Yeah, because I'm a single mom. But And I, I check my son on any and everything. And I'm nosy all up in his business. No matter how much I'm working, <laughs> you're going to know me his friends are gonna know me all of them know me their moms know me i go knock on people's door be like hey your kid is playing with my kid i need to know are they hanging out over here i need to know where everybody live all that stuff like i am nosy my son be like dang mom i search in his backpack i go through his folder every day i, I want to know what you're doing what you're writing any letters and notes you got in your bag i want to know what you're doing in class i go volunteer i pop up i sit in class because i want to know about the kids you're telling me about when you get home all that but I have every right to because he's a kid. He's not an adult. And I do it to the kids, um, his friends. And I come back and report to their mom like, oh, I was in your kid class today and he was acting up. Like, I'm that parent. It takes a village to raise a child. Dating a 19-year-old around the block. Uh, regular dude. We were on the same page in life. Dating R. Kelly at 17. <laughs> I know he's way beyond that league. Yeah. R. Kelly was in his 20s dating these girls. Like, Aaliyah was 15, he was 27. That is way too far off. Um, let me see. It can't be just right, right, Jazz? <laughs> Your boys are comfortable with telling us everything. My son is comfortable because he know I'm very open. I'm not going to judge you. You're not going to get in trouble. I want to know what's going on. Um, he know I don't, I trust, but verify. That's my thing. <laughs> trust, call but me, verify. Me, me, no, I didn't call you. Uh, he had floors of girls, two homes. He had a home in Florida and he had a studio in um, Chicago with rooms. And he would have these girls sitting in the room either facing the wall they couldn't talk to anybody he made them call him daddy that shit is like that's crazy that's sickening controlling them they had to ask to pee they had to ask to take a shower they had to ask to use the bathroom he would make it a situation where they don't even meet up with each other in the house they couldn't cross paths they couldn't talk to each other they couldn't talk to the dancers they couldn't talk to the band members nobody can talk to them that's control And then they stay there because they feel they're manipulated and their mind is set on nobody wants you. It is horrible. But Johnny, don't get on the women because you can't say bad women parenting because they didn't make a baby by themselves. And that's another thing that people mind is so set on blaming the mom we didn't make a baby by ourselves. Where's the daddy? It would make a big difference if the fathers were involved. And I kid you not, because when my dad, I went with him every weekend. 
it makes a difference because I see the people that didn't grow up with a father, they just, their only accomplishment is having babies every year. Looking for the next baby daddy. Being a baby mama twice, three times, four times. They never learn their lesson because they're look, they can't be single. They can't be alone. They're man hopping, like I mentioned before. They're going from relationship to relationship because they're, they don't want to be alone. They don't want to face their self. That's why they never heal. That's why they're damaged goods. That's why you have all these broken relationships. This is why I'm a parent coach and helping people co-parent. Because there's a lot of people that are single parents and parents separately. And they're wanting to be able to co-parent to save their kids. I want to save kids from their parents. That's why I'm a parent coach, to help the parent. Because it's not the kid fault. They were never taught. Just because it's something that's happening often don't make it right. Exactly, Jazz. Society just used that. Um, hold on. Society just so used to uh, wrong. Right. They don't want to break the cycle because it's become a norm. Just like people look at these celebrities for co-parenting and stuff like that. I know somebody told me I was weird because my son and dad has four kids, four moms, four different states, and we all co-parent together. Like the other day, I had my um, bonus daughter. She calls me mom. She always tell people I'm her second mom. That's just how we are. People cannot be, they can have a, a adult relationship and be non-dysfunctional and make it look normal. Um, we make it look normal. It's normal to me. My dad co-parented with my mom. My dad had a wife, a girlfriend, three baby mamas, and six kids, and two stepkids. We all had it. Spent the weekends together, holidays, go watch them play baseball, go to the park. We did everything together. Family events, we were all there. So it's not like it's uncommon. But people look at that because they're so used to dysfunction. They're so used to people um, being dysfunctional, arguing, being single parents, not giving a dang what, if the other parent is there. But we're trying to make this a new norm. And that's what's wrong why these kids were in that situation. There was no fathers there. People blame the mom. Or when there are fathers, then they can be sold off. They're selling their kids off to a celebrity for money and fame. Johnny, we not gonna start. <laughs> he said like, because black queen women cause, uh, cause they run the man off. They don't run the man off. Men just don't step up to their responsibility. And some women don't, because there are single fathers. I know quite a few uh, amazing dads. I know a lot of amazing dads, because I associate myself with those positive, um, awesome dads and examples. And you can still have male figures in the um, child's life, but it's not always the woman fought. But women get blamed for being a single mom, when most of the time it's not by choice. It's by default, because no one else was, if they don't do it, nobody else will then dads need to step up and not just mom. Yes, Reese, they really do. My baby daddy, a pimp. he's not, he's just stepped up to, people make mistakes. And me, I'm the type of person, I'm not gonna judge you for your mistakes as long as you're being responsible and taking care of your responsibilities. Do what you gotta do. I just don't want my son to be damaged goods. I want him to be an amazing husband. I want him to have strong male figures in his life so that he won't end up being a jerk. I want him to be a great husband for a decent uh, woman. You wish your daughter would try to... <laughs> yeah, but you like, you're justifying this stuff, but you wish your, like I said, if it was the other way around and it was your daughter or something, like you would go crazy. Johnny, <laughs> yeah. Johnny, you, you're one of the people, like, you're damaged goods, and it's sad to say that, but you need to do some healing. You definitely do. You know a lot of deadbeat mamas, and it is a lot of deadbeat mamas out there, because there's girls that, generational curse, nobody's breaking the cycle, but that can change. But people don't tell those people. They don't tell them, like, try to correct it. They don't tell them you shouldn't be doing this don't nobody try to fix it and then when they try to get help they're going to the people that's part of the broken system generational curse it continues they never learn from their mom their mom never learned from their mom nobody's breaking the cycle nobody's seeking counseling because our community always against therapists and stuff like that 
you can see a coach. If you want to don't want to go to a therapist because you think all they're going to do is say you're depressed or whatever, or anxiety, um, and give you medication, you can go to a coach. We will break down those layers and push, get you pushed forward um, in whatever you're going through. We take you through that healing process. That's why we have professionals and experts out there to help you. Men don't even realize how easy they have it. They, they don't. But they like to play, uh, play on the blame. Because a lot of, like, a lot of guys I dealt with, um, believe it or not, more men reach out um, to me for help. Because they got to the point where they finally realized, like, oh, my child needs me. And now I need to be able to reestablish a bond and connection with my child to be involved in their life. So that they won't end up like the next person kid in jail, uh, teen pregnancy, stuff like that. It's never too late to fix the problem. But people spend too much time worrying about the blame. Reese. <laughs> you don't have hard questions, Johnny. You just have your opinion and a negative mindset. Men have it easy because they don't have to be that 24-7 person there for the child. They don't have to go through the change, the body change. They don't have to go through the physical aspect of having a baby, getting pregnant, stuff like that. They don't get the um, the burden of everything. They don't stay up late at night. Well, some of them do because some of them stick there. Some of them are actually true uh, men that actually stay through the process a lot of guys can't even make it through the pregnancy. A lot of guys leave and the person is single by the time the baby arrives. I see that happen way too often because they don't want to stick it out. It's too much work. A lot of people don't um, put any efforts. It's just asking too much to be there. It's asking too much to um, just be there for your offspring. <laughs> it's like if they wanted a donor, they would have went and did it on their own at a sperm bank or something. That's easy to um, do, go get someone to just have a baby with and have a contract. Like, uh, it's easy for you guys because you can walk away. Women usually are not the ones that walk away. They take on the responsibility. I hear guys with the ignorant, well, I didn't want no kids, but you didn't want to put no condom on either. So, <laughs> that's an excuse. If you didn't want kids, you didn't do what you had to do to prevent from having them. Simple as that. Cause my son and dad used to say that. I didn't want any more kids. So we supposed to just go get an abortion? No. You do what you got to do <laughs> to make sure it don't happen as well. But it's it's the negative, ignorant mindset. And then a lot of people don't realize it until they're older. But it takes men a lot longer than women to get the picture. They get that message when the child is older and can speak on their own. Yeah, and then usually by then... Your child is over it. They don't even want nothing to do with you because you've been gone too long. Um, but it's not like it's no hope. There's no excuse of uh, blaming a woman for you not having a relationship with your kid. <laughs> you have to acknowledge your role in the participation in having a kid. Right, sis. If that's the woman you choose to uh, mess with. Like me, my rule is I'm not going to be physically involved with someone I'm not willing to have a child by. But I'm I'm a different breed. I've been celibate. My son is nine. I've been celibate seven out of those nine years. Like, I don't just deal with anybody. I don't have sex with everybody I deal with. I'm not trying to sign up to be somebody's baby mama. No. If I do have another kid, and that's a strong if, I would need to be married because it's going to cost you to leave. I'm not raising a kid by myself again. <clears throat> Why is it? Because they don't get it. It takes men longer for it to click because their mind don't mature as fast as women. <laughs> Dad, your phone died. <laughs> you talking about once reception of men, not all men. Yeah, I say it's not all men because I know a few amazing fathers. I can tag a lot right now because I only associate myself with those type of people. I do do background checks, twin. <laughs> Believe it or not, I run background checks. I need to see lab work. I need to see all that. <laughs> You're not touching me because this is my temple and I value myself and my body. 
stop looking at what they're driving. See, materialistic, see, my love language is quality time and affirmation. So gifts is my least love language. I don't care about materialistic stuff. That's why I don't deal with guys that value Jordans and video games and all that stuff. Because you're not on my level. You will impress me if you have a vision or a goal. If you have a degree, I need to see your your transcripts. <laughs> Those are things I, I need your resume. Like I don't I don't play with the little boys because they're not on my level. I couldn't even have a conversation with them because they'll be so far gone. I don't I don't want to explain myself. You should know common common sense. So it's like I that stuff don't impress me at all. But um back to the topic at hand <laughs> there's no excuse to justify those actions speak to your kids get in their business if you are scared and you don't know how to start that conversation i have the link in the bio for my icebreaker cards there's four editions there's one for child where you get to know your child better because a lot of parents are on autopilot you don't really know a lot about your child you don't know you can know maybe their favorite characters if they're younger what they like to do their hobbies um, stuff like that, but you will learn so much. Like I learned that my son liked to draw. I didn't even know he knew how to draw. His dad draws. So that's something they have in common that they can do together. Um, uh, I know he loved movies and I know his favorite color and characters and stuff, but every, every month I learned a little more about him because the older he get, the more he changed, the more he mature. So I use my icebreaker cards to get to know him better. And then he asked me questions cause he always wondered, how do you and my dad meet? And he knew we were best friends in high school and stuff like that. Um, so like, he know that's how we met. And he's like, well, how do you have a baby by your best friend? He was like seven or eight when he was asking me those type of questions. And I, we answer them because people think like my kids are too young to talk and have that talk with them. If they're asking you, they're ready. You're just scared to have that conversation. So if it's uncomfortable for you, you can definitely click the link and purchase some, um, icebreaker cards um the parent edition the child edition i have a co-parented edition so if you're ready to have that conversation with the and heal and go through forgiveness and learn how to communicate with the other parent you don't got to be together you can ask questions if they're open to sit down and you guys go through a few questions a week or whatever you can email them a picture or text them a picture of the card and ask them to respond if you can't communicate in other ways but just have that conversation is really important um some females don't know what it what to do with their kids either they don't because they weren't ready or mature enough to have kids but they weren't responsible enough to not have them that is so immature video games and jordans yeah i had to school one guy he had like literally every pair of jordan a few people actually and i was counting <clears throat> his jordans and i was like you know two pair of jordans you could have went to europe for a couple of weeks do you know this many pair of Jordans you could have bought a, that was a down payment for a house? Like I had to, I total stuff up like that. That one pair of Jordan is a, a three day cruise to Mexico, but you've never been out of the country. You've never even been out of LA County. You've never been out of California. You don't have a car. You're on the bus, but you fly as hell. Like I school guys on that type of stuff because it don't make any sense, but it's that hood mentality. So you got to change your mindset to get it. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, everybody don't have to have a degree, but it's um, it's just a preference for me. Like me, I, I like a certain type of person. I'm not looking for a provider because I can provide for myself. But I don't want to be bored in a relationship with nothing to do. That's why I need someone that I can amplify. That's not quite at the level I'm at, but we can build and be boss and build an empire together. It's also easier for a woman to raise a kid due to... But see, that's that poverty mentality. Why would you think about government assistance? When you have kids, you shouldn't be relying on someone else to help you take care of them besides the other parent. Fathers don't get much aid. Like, I don't even think about a section eight. I don't qualify for another, I probably never will. But I've always had a great job and since I had my kid and in college and stuff like that. So when you lay out the foundation the foundation needs to be straight before you consider having a kid and if you can't afford to have a kid without someone's help you definitely don't need to be having sex or you need to be on many birth controls and use condoms because we don't need any more 
poverty. We don't need any more broken people coming into the world struggling. Grandma, auntie, friends, everyone is pretty much throwing themselves, trying to help women. Not for men. Women are nurturing. So they're supposed to be around the child. Everybody, like, <clears throat> you need to go back and look at some of my videos. And I distinguish between what a child get from their mom and what a child get from their dad. And it's important for them to get that from both parents. Not just one parent. That's why we have so many damaged people in this world. That's how we have this generational curse. Because people think, oh, it's a mom can do a better job than a man. No, because we still need those qualities from a guy that what our father can teach us. Um, and what a mom can teach us. Moms are, can teach men how to be nurturing and stuff like that. But fathers can teach their daughters how to watch out for some of these no good deadbeats. That's why we don't have options of good husbands <laughs> to marry and stuff like that. Yeah, because a lot of people um, don't have degrees, but they're bosses and they're in a certain um, caliber. It takes a village to raise a child, but at the end of the day, the parents are the most important. Um, we don't have to do it on our own. Yes, you have a village. That's what I. That's one of my uh, models is a village to take the uh, takes to raise a child, but you don't have to be forced to raise one by yourself. And then you have to reach out for other people in your village. The primary parents, which is the mother and the father, should take care of 90%. If they need help with like care, no one else should be financially helping you take care of your child, period, point blank. That is your responsibility. It's your responsibility to keep a roof over your kid's head. It's your responsibility to feed them. If you need to help with daycare because daycare is very expensive so that you can go to work or school and handle business, not to go party and being in the street making another baby daddy or baby mama. That's not what your village is for. They're for support, to encourage you so you won't give up. For those hard times when you feel like you're going to be broken down, that's when your village, when your village come in. Your village is there to support you. They're not there to take care of you. And that's that poverty mindset, once again. You need eight. <laughs> Everywhere you go, everybody is in some type of poverty because of the company's taking. Nope. Um, that's an excuse, um, Terrell. That's an excuse. Like me, I grew up in California. It got too expensive for me to be a single mom there. I moved to Vegas. There's places you could live and have financial freedom. I get to travel the world. We just went to Paris, London, and Italy. We're about to go to Spain, Greece, and, um, and London. You can do it. So that's an excuse because there's a lot of people making it as a single parent. Because you do what you have to do and you make those sacrifices to not need help from someone. Like me, my son has no needs. I've never gotten child support a day in my life. But I still co-parent with his dad. Because he can't financially help me because I make way more money than him. And he got way more kids than me. I don't say, oh, you can't see your son. He's going to help. He help whenever he can. I don't hold that against him. And I'm not going to make uh, courts make a decision. Uh, what we can, can and cannot do with our child. Or where we can, can and cannot take them. This is what I teach parents. It's like, that's why in my program, I take you through a mindset change first. Because that's usually the problem. You were trained to think a certain way because you feel like because everybody else is like this. Because if you grew up in the hood and everybody's struggling, that's what you were um, privy to. You don't have to be like that. You can change it. <clears throat> I just feel as though too many people play too many positions. If you know how to play your position. But what's the position? A mother is a mother, a father is a father. Each of them is supposed to be responsible equally. Not one person take on more than the other. Even if you're not in a relationship. Because some people are single parents in a marriage. Because the husband's out working all the time and the mom feel like a single parent. It happens. But they come together in some way. There have to be a balance. And that's, that's really important. It have to be a balance. Each person can know their roles. But at the same time... You just have to make sure you're raising mentally, physically, and emotionally healthy kids. That's the main part. Your kids are not in need of something. They're not in danger. They're in a comfortable environment. That's what's really important. 
but I have to go, you guys, because I am at work. <laughs> my lunch break, and it's almost over. I got to feed my kid. But thank you guys for tuning in. And I'm going to be sharing a video right after this for my uh, coach, Amber. Um, she's going to be going live soon. That's one of my coaches. Um, but the point is, get involved in your kids. Have that, that uncomfortable talk with them. And make sure they're good. Make sure nobody... And your family is bothering them start asking questions take them to the doctor if they're if you know your kid may be having sex have that conversation with them if they are put them on birth control give them some condoms because it's cheaper than having a baby but thank you guys for tuning in i hope you enjoy the rest of your day um send me some topics you want me to talk about um and i'll go live again until next tuesday otherwise i'll go live um sooner if you guys send me some good juicy topics um Hope I can join in the live with you. Yeah, I'll invite people. If you want to um, have an open conversation, because I do want to um, do a um, a healthy debate with fathers versus mothers. So I will be doing a paper. I might do a whole week on that and then let invite different people on and we have a healthy debate about different views because they see things differently. Um but I'll announce that soon. I'll probably do that towards the end of the month. We have a healthy debate, and I'll invite some people on because I would like to hear other people's opinion. Um, and we can do live coaching. If you want to do, like, a, a free on-the-spot coaching, we can do that. You put you in the hot seat. But until Tuesday, or uh, maybe I'll go live sooner. But um, enjoy the rest of your night. Good night, and I'll talk to you guys later. Have a nice day.